Let me go grab a bottle of scotch real fast. I'm gonna need it. Hey guys, welcome to Building a Backpack, episode three, where I'm taking you through the journey of me building and launching my first backpack brand. The past few weeks has been pretty crazy. Uh, lots of twists and turns, no lack of drama, but that's what the journey's all about, and I'm having a blast. We got some news with the backpack design, with the connection solution between the sling and the backpack itself. I announced the actual designs to the email list, and the response was, you'll see. But let's kick it off by talking about the name of the backpack company, which I'm changing. Let me tell you why. So, uh, in building a backpack episode two, I announced that the brand name was going to be Venture Nation. And I was stoked about it until I started to get some feedback. And then I quickly realized that that name was a mistake. A bit because of some of the comments I got from the community about the name being too long or too tough to read, but mostly because I didn't realize the name was giving off the completely wrong vibe. You see, like, I'm really into the entrepreneurial scene, so for me, the word venture brings up images of people taking risks on businesses and starting side hustles and new career paths and carving their own path in life, right? Yeah. I Exactly. So after I announced the name Venture Nation, I quickly realized that, yeah, while some people do associate the word venture with taking risks, the reality is that most people associate the word venture with adventure, like the great outdoors, which kind of defeats the purpose because this new backpack brand that I'm making is going to be an urban line. So I have to make sure that I'm giving off the right vibe with the brand name. I can't have people read the name and be like, oh, Venture Nation, what's that like a a hiking group in Colorado, so back to the drawing board. So I'm taking a lot of the feedback from the community into consideration and sort of hitting the drawing board again and trying to figure out a new brand name. All right, on the move, about to get some work done, but first, it's dumpling time. One of my favorite parts about living in Hong Kong is the food scene. It's just insane, especially if you like Asian food and different types of Asian food. I've been trying to brainstorm new names and ideas. I keep hitting the wall. So I asked Pablo, our graphic designer, to take a stab at it, see what he can do. He said he'd get back to me in a few hours, so we'll see what he's bringing to the table. Because the only table I'm worried about right now is the table with the dumplings on it. Really good dumplings. Some ideas that I have, I like I'm working with the word ville, V-I-L-L-E. It's a French word for city, which is just cool, you know, urban line plus city is like a community. Also the Italian word avanti means forward, so also got some potential. I'm gonna try and fuse them a little bit, see what I can come up with. Rocking my Air Tech Sling 2, my daily driver, when I have to work. If I got a laptop, this is my guy. Until I make my own backpack and then, sorry Air Tech Sling 2, it'll be bye bye. It's been a good run though. All right, so check it out. We're trying to figure out what buckle we're gonna use for the sling. Originally, I was like, let's just go with the Fidlock, right? The one that's on the Black Ember TKS. Uh, it's also on the, what else? The Modern Day Fair Active Sling. It's a really commonly used buckle. And for that reason, I'm actually saying, I don't wanna do it now. Cause I'm trying to do something new with this bag. Bring something new to the table. Plus, that buckle is heavy and bulky. So John just sent me some different options. Let me show you what we're looking at. We got some options from Woojin here. I like the look of this map. Magic catcher. I'm not sure what material it is though. Seems like a decent possibility. Trimmers? No. No, no. Sorry, trimmers. Duraflex, always a classic. This one got a decent look to it, but check this one out. GC Prima Light. I like the vibe. It's made of zinc, the material right there, so it's gonna be metal. It looks like it's just gonna be really sexy. Obviously though, I'm never gonna know what or how good these buckles actually are until we actually get my hands on them, until they're actually attached to the sling and we test them out. But one sip at a time, probably gonna put an order in for some of these. I'll let you guys know what I think of them. All right, cool. I just got a text from Pablo. He said he's ready to show me a couple of the potential brand name ideas that he's got. So I'm gonna run home and check them out. Do you like any of Pablo's recommendations? Yeah, so like I got home and I looked over them and I thought there was some decent potential, but I just needed to talk to Pablo. So him and I jumped on a call right away. These are like the, the four that, that I come up with. First one, Radcliffe. 
Is is what? That Radcliffe. Rad Radcliffe? Yeah. yeah. My last name? <laughs> yeah. It's a good it's a good name. My dad would be proud. Yeah, naming the backpacks after myself was something that I was just not into. I mean, sure, it worked for Tom Bin, but uh not for me. But then Pablo listed off a few more names that I thought had a lot of potential. I think it's got a really nice ring to it. I really like it. It's a strong word with the V ending with the O. It's got some masculinity to it. So the next one is Henko. It's a, it's a Japanese word. Mm -hmm. And it means uh, it embodies a change that you can never uh, go back from. Overall, I really appreciate Pablo's unique creative angle. There were a handful of names that he suggested that were super strong. So now I'm basically tinkering with the names, I'm putting them in Canva, testing them out with the logo, and most importantly, I'm sending them to Bonamark, our trademark agency. And then they are running studies on the names so we can see how trademarkable the name actually is. But the brand name isn't the only challenge that we're facing right now. We also have to start perfecting some of the design aspects of the actual backpack. Not to give too much away, but as I showed the email list recently, this concept is a two-in-one sling backpack combo that's never really been done before. At least the way that we're tackling it. But because it's never been done before, we really don't have anything to base it off of. So that means that we really have to nail the connection solution between the backpack and the sling in a way that's satisfying and easy to use, but that doesn't compromise safety and security, which is a lot harder than it sounds. So I jumped on a call with our designer, John, to discuss this in more detail. We have the one that is simpler, where you can basically connect the sling in a much easier fashion without too much hassle or special connection equipment. And the other one that is a bit more complex and created, creates a, a little bit more of a satisfying interaction. We also talked a bit about our materials. Do you have any ideas specifically what we're going to try for the first prototype with the material? I have a few in mind, to be honest. Um, yeah. I really, really like like the two of my favorite fabrics are one twill nylon and the second one would be a PU coated nylon, a mass PU coated nylon. One feels a bit more techy, the second. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one has a bit more finesse to it, um, depending on which uh, sort of fabric that is. It could have a slight shine to it, like really just a little. We don't want it like a to bling. We talked about the water bottle solution. So for the water bottle solution, we're doing a solution that's on the inside of the bag, but accessible from the outside. Now, I just want to clarify that on the inside, it's going to be waterproof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I intend and the idea was to like the lining that goes in into the bag uh, should be welded as for waterproof backpacks like really waterproof, not water resistant. And even if the factory has to outsource this part and then bring it in for um, assembly, for the final assembly, that isn't a problem. And then we'd have like a really waterproof section where you could slide in the, the bottle, zip it up. And we talked about our timeline moving forward. All right, cool, dude. So I think we're good. I just want to clarify with the timeline then. Do you think we're going to be able to get a prototype by, before Chinese New Year? We need to take into consideration the fact that usually sample rooms get um, pretty busy around this kind of time before uh, Chinese New Year. Sure. Um, but we'll push there. I'm working on the CAD right now, so doing the best we can. Awesome, dude. I'm starting to get a little concerned about the timeline. I mean, our goal was a summer launch and it's still possible to hit that, but things are getting a bit tight. I think everything will be fine as long as we can get our first sample out and ready by mid-January. 
The reason for January is because our factory is located in Shenzhen, China, and Chinese New Year, I think, is the third week of January. And when Chinese New Year happens, everything shuts down for like weeks. So as long as we can get the first sample done before that, that gives me some more time to test it out, maybe on my travels and in my everyday carry, and hopefully get a few versions out to the focus group so we can just keep the momentum going as fast as possible. So last night, I revealed the backpack drawings to the email list for the first time. I sent them an email with a link to a video that explained the backpack concept and showed them the drawings. And I gave them a link to a survey where I asked for their brutally honest feedback. Okay, so looking through some of these responses, the first question I asked is, do you think this is a unique and or interesting carry idea? We got 82% that said yes, around 15% that said maybe, and 3% that said no. Obviously, it's really encouraging to see such a strong response, but I would agree, like, my concern with this bag that we're making isn't that it was a unique concept. I've reviewed 200 plus bags. You know, I know this is kind of a different take and that's why I'm really excited about the idea. So I'm glad that everyone seems to agree with me that this is sort of a fresh take, a three in one carry solution. Um, so good start. Okay, now let's get into the thick of it. I asked, what do you like least about the concept? All right, we got this 15 liters, not useful for me. I mean, saw this coming. The size is not gonna be for everyone. Um, hopefully this bag will be super successful and we can make a larger version, smaller version, whatever size you need, hopefully we can make it at some point. Oh yes, so we've been, <laughs> we've been getting a lot of comments about this, that our current back panel design looks like lady bits, if you get what I mean. This is something the designer, John and I, did not realize at all at first. And a lot of people don't think it looks like this, but a lot of people do. So um, John and I are gonna go back to the drawing board and try and figure out a new back panel solution and design that looks a little bit less like Lady Bits. See, the, the value of crowdsourcing, right? If, if we didn't ask y'all about the design, neither of us ever would have seen that. We would have launched with a badge back panel, and I'm just glad that you guys pointed that out. So thank you for the brutal honesty. We're gonna change that ASAP. I'm just so stoked to have everyone's support, and I'm not gonna stop until I make the best NPC that, that I can. Okay guys, that concludes episode three of Building a Backpack. Thank you so much for watching. If you are not on the email list, why not? What WTF, like get on there right now because you will get an email sent to you immediately showing you the backpack designs. It'll get you on the votes. Um, it'll just show you some more behind the scenes content. I wanna see you on the email list. So sign up if you haven't already and uh, shoot me a comment what you think, how things are going below. Thanks so much. I'm Aaron, I'll catch you next time.